Thank you. It's a great honor to be here. Uh, Your Excellencies, MPs, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. Uh, yes, this is about crisis. And uh, the more I, I've been thinking last years, this is the crisis of values, as, as, as you said in the other words. And uh, I don't know if it is uh, stuck in the, somewhere in the Finno-Ugric genetical code, but uh, uh, this is our way uh, behavior. We uh, quite often, if we remind the monetary reform, we make things very, in very different way uh, compared with the others. And our, uh, how we dealt with the crisis was also very much against the mainstream uh, economic uh, thinking around the world. My very short CV here. The, the, the most important is the, the second row there, because free is compulsory, as you know. <laughs> so yeah, this is our cardiogram. I call this cardiogram. Uh, I, uh, if, if, if it was medical cardiogram, then I didn't know anything about this. Because what, what I know is, is, is if there is a stripe, then the body is dead. And as you remember, communists uh, thinking hard were able to get rid of the business cycle. But, uh, uh, but it says a lot if you have been uh, willing uh, and able to follow uh, main uh, business and economic news during the last 20 years. And this is what I have done. And these ups and downs, of course, uh, uh, in Estonian case, are very deep. And there are good reasons for this, and we will come to this. So one thing what, is, uh, what you can show uh, here is uh, that there is a kind of symmetry. And of course, uh, Estonians today are, they have to be much more smart because we have experienced the full length business cycle for today. Because uh, uh, nobody in uh, 2005, six, seven was thinking that the crisis is possible. So we, we uh, and we almost reached the record uh, 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 of 92. And, uh, and this is, of course, uh, our, our story, a in, uh, in very brief story. Our, we, uh, once we had the uh, youngest prime minister in, in, in Europe, we built up one of the most free economies in the world, because in Eco Freedom Index Heritage Foundation, once we were uh, the fourth in the world, then we did some very extraordinary things, currency board, flat tax, then there was two uh, foreign shocks, uh, and it was not our fault. We ended up in uh, zero growth rate. Actually, it was minus today. They have corrected the data. Uh, but it wasn't really our fault, that we, and we didn't make very major mistakes this time. Then we made something very extraordinary, and it was seam color steel, this uh, zero rate uh, on reinvested uh, profit. Then we didn't pay attention to the, uh, the, the, the global crisis in the beginning of the millennium, and, the, and this is really a miracle, because if you open the macroeconomics textbook, then on the 10th page it says if you are a small and open country, you must be influenced by foreign shocks. We didn't pay any attention. And then we reached year 2004, and everybody got crazy. I've drawn this parallel already years that, that if, if money is too cheap, then people get crazy as if... Uh, as if uh, uh, vodka is too cheap. And then, of course, uh, in, in the last uh, recession, in, in the last crisis, we, we participated uh, uh, with our own uh, Estonian uh, mistakes. And then we jumped up and exported ourselves out from the crisis, and very quickly we were, again, the, the, uh, the, the quickest uh, growing economy in Europe before in this booming era, we were the third in the world after China and, and Ireland. The biggest policy, make, policy mistake made ever during these 20 years was uh, December, the Christmas period, uh, 2008, when our parliament voted for the next year's budget. And they vote, and everybody knows, we, they have to vote for the budget which is balanced. And they voted as if the next year's economic growth would be two plus 2.6, but it happened to be minus 14. And then we found ourselves in very deep problem because uh, we failed first time to, follow, uh, to join the Eurozone 2007 because of the inflation criteria. And now the next date was uh, January 2011. And now we were afraid we failed because of the budget criteria. And we, and we made it. And this is really with what is very difficult to understand for Keynesian politicians and, and economists and for regular, ordinary uh, Western European 
uh, people. Uh, what we did, we had some reserves, not enough, of course, but Latvians didn't have at all, and then that's why they had to knock the door of the IMF. Then we sold government property, there are still some left. Then we raised taxes, excise taxes, for example, um, and, 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 um, and value-added tax. And, uh, and we, uh, work, uh, we, we cut uh, wages, and not just 5%, but, but uh, in some cases 20% in the public sector, and the private sector, of course, was enforced to do the same. Uh, good times are bad because they lead. <coughs> the more good times are, the, qu the more quickly they lead to the bad times. This is what happens to the labor unit cost. <coughs> and you see this is the index, 2005 is 100. And after three years, uh, it was 100. And, and uh, after four years, it was, for, in Estonian case, it was 150 almost. Okay? And you see uh, what happened in Latvia. It was even, uh, after four years, it was 180. Just for you to compare that in Germany, in the same time, the, the wages were very stable. The house prices uh, in Estonia, in two years, from 100 to 170. And, and of course, Latvians, <laughs> they were crazy, uh, from 100 to 244. This is what happens if, if uh, the money is too cheap and the economy is growing too fast. And you definitely recognize the both guys. Uh, so uh, we, what, what we did was actually 100% different from what, what Keynesians are suggesting. And of course, when we started to say, uh, and I told you, we, we jumped up very quickly from the, from the bottom. We were the fastest growing economy in Europe very quickly. And of course, we started to say, we, we did very well. Look at us. We are, we are growing already so fast. And, of course, the other guy on the right-hand side said that you are manipulating with the data and, uh, you know, uh, you are taking the wrong timeline and so on. And, of course, um, our president is fluent in English and he lays down probably quite late at night and maybe he drinks some wine. Um, uh, meanwhile, but, but with very fluent English, uh, he said that Keynes was wrong and, uh, and, and, and Krugman was wrong. So, uh, actually, Keynes wasn't wrong. Uh, a lot of people think that Keynes is for big government. No, Keynes is not for big government. Keynes was uh, for flexible government. So if this is a business cycle, and there are ups and downs, so if there are bad times, government should intervene, and the good times sh should draw back. Okay? So, so government involvement should go up and down, up and down. What, what actually happened, uh, and how with the government involvement in, in good times, not shrinking in, in bad times, growing, and therefore... In Sweden, for the beginning of the uh, 90s, they reached the situation that the uh, government budget was eating uh, almost like 67% of the, of, the, of the gross domestic product. And there is one more thing. Uh, uh, today's Keynesians, and, and Krugman included, they have learned only the half of the gains, Keynes. Like Estonians know Josef Deutsch, okay? being not able to, to learn everything. They, they, they have learned that if there are bad times, there's a crisis, the minus is accepted. Master's criteria is minus three, you know. But it had to be the, the exception, of course. But it has to be followed with the plus three, at least, in good times. They remember they learned the minus part, but they, they forgot that, that the plus part has to be there as well. And, 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 you know, in some countries it was not just minus three, but minus ten. And if you have ten years minus three, then you end up with this budget uh, debt. So the result is the sustainable budget crisis. Why did we fall so deep? Why, why our minus was 14 when in, in, in other Europe minus three, four, five maybe? Okay, in Greece a little bit more. And why we grew plus 10 when, at the same time, plus 2 was, was, was a very good result in, in the rest of Europe. Um, uh, the explanation is very, very, very easy. Estonia is, is really very small and very open economy. We are one of the most open economies in the world. The, actually, and this is uh, the, the five years period time. So uh, our export uh, was in this period, in average, 95%. And you see Latvia, uh, 50, 59. So we are very open. It, it also means that, that our, our future, our economic future now depends on how are doing the countries w who are buying from us, our export partners. And the, the first three, Sweden, Finland, Russia, is altogether 42.5. First five, including Latvia, Lithuania, 
seven almost. And of course, uh, probably you know that the business news, uh, the economic news, from especially from Finland, especially from Russia, is is very bad today. Uh, the forecast for the for the uh, next uh, next decade. Sweden is doing a little bit better. Latvia is doing very well. Our growth rate in the first quarter was plus 0.4. Latvia is growing 10 times faster, 4.0. But they, they alone can't help us. But this is, you see, how we ex exported ourselves out, out from the crisis. It was, in, in the bottom, it was 60%, and very quickly we reached like, almost like 90, 98. What's next? Uh, shall we lose the last Estonian before the wages with Finland will equalize? And this is really a problem. Did Estonia play actually? We, we are still very proud and we still believe that we did very well all these 20 years. And we were very good getting out from the bottom. But if, if we look the longer timeline, did we play full in 20 years? Why, why am I asking this? Because we had a historical chance. It was 92, June. 92, we had the monetary reform. We fixed our exchange rate with currency board, you know, 100% coverage with foreign, foreign reserves. Uh, with, with Deutsche Mark. And, and believe it or not, but the average wage was 26 euros per month this, this year. 10 years later, it was 643, and today this is close to 1,000. Uh, and, and you understand, uh, 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 and at the, the same time, the inflation... In the year of uh, monetary reform, the inflation was 1,000. Next year, 90. We, we reached the normal, if, if five is normal inflation, only in, in, in the beginning of the, in the, in the millennium. So we've such a huge high inflation and we fixed exchange rate. Estonians were getting rich very quickly by, to buy foreign produced uh, uh, consumer goods. And the second, the, the production cost in Estonia was growing in the, with the same speed. So, and we reached in one quarter in 2007, we reached the uh, uh, current account minus, which is, was minus 22. How we lost our competitiveness? Okay, so here, here are lots of, lots of numbers. But, okay, what was the historical chance? Everything produced in, in the beginning of the 90s in Estonia was, of course, rubbish. Almost everything. But you can sell rubbish if you sell it very cheap. China is doing this today. Okay? And now there was like two races. Everything produced in, in Estonia became more and more expensive very quickly. So now, now the important point is, did the product quality and productivity grow at least to the same speed? And here is two, two tables. Uh, you see the period here is... Um, uh, uh, 2000 and, uh, 2012, in 13 years, uh, uh, the um, pro uh, 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 productivity per hour in Estonia was increasing from 7 to 11.11, .11, means 60%. And please remember this figure. Okay. This is what happened to hourly labor cost. The period is not exactly the same. It's 99 to 2008 because, for some reason, Eurostat uh, doesn't exactly have the same period, but, but it's almost the same. Uh, in the same period of time, the, the labor cost has tripled. And it is not just Estonia. Everybody who is in red, these are these countries where labor cost has grown faster than productivity. It means uh, Europe. In general, as a, as a continent, as the as 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 eurozone, as the European Union is losing the competitiveness. So uh, this it gives me uh, a good reason to be quite pessimistic, looking to the future. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your very excellent um, and um, very inspiring presentation. But we have time for a few quick questions, if there are any. So you're welcome. Yes, please. Uh, Teacher from Estonian Business School. So uh, you uh, gave a very good overview up to this year. So now we seem to have a lower GDP growth rate in this year than in Latvia and Lithuania, quite low uh, to be called a catch-up economy. 
So is it some kind of next uh, crisis cycle or is it some new turn in development? Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, President Lennart very said that we should be very happy that because we are now in Europe. Uh, yes, yes, we are. But what we also know is that, uh, we, and we are very much integrated, politically, economically, today in Europe. Uh, uh, and of course, we are now today the, the most poor country in Eurozone. Uh, in January, we will, we will be the, will be the next, uh, the second most poor country after, after Latvia. But it is not... not also a big secret that uh, that uh, Eurozone and the European Union, you, s you saw these competitiveness figures. Uh, uh, so there are more and more experts uh, uh, saying that uh, Europe and the Eurozone will uh, uh, foresee at least one uh, lost decade. And of course, as uh, and you saw the export, uh, how, how dependent we are the, uh, with the export. So, so my slogan has been already a couple of years that back to East, and, and East doesn't mean just Russia because Russia has also problems, but, but there are other countries in East. And if we go even further to the East, then there is uh, already America. So if, 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 if Estonia wants to grow faster than European Union or Eurozone, then it has to, not, not to cut uh, links with, with Europe and Eurozone, but it has to find new challenges in the East. And you know, the next 10 years will be very critical because you and me, we are very happy because there is a sausage and cheese in the shop. And, and that's why we even, we hate what, what the politicians are doing, but we are still very happy because we have better life. Youngsters, 20 years, 30, 30, 30 plus years, I, I guess that they are not happy because there is a sausage in the shop. And, 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 and uh, I am afraid, I am sh I'm not sure, but I am afraid that in their collective mind, they have lost the hope that the, pri that the wage difference, the living standard difference, will not shrink quickly enough. And this is just 86 kilometers and uh, uh, one hour and a half and 20 euros. And we are losing every year 6,000 people and in, in, in good, in, in the age of uh, working age and in the age of having kids. Thank you very much for this answer. We have time just for one more quick question, if that is one. Yes, please. All right, sorry, I'll repeat. My name is Caroline Roots. I work for the Estonian Development Fund. Uh, my question would be, what are your ideas to raise the labor productivity then? I mean, you showed the um, table where the red indicated that we're not doing so well, but what are your ideas to move forward? Thank you. Uh, uh, the honest answer? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, I have some feel. This is connected with education. Uh, if we take our uh, university level, then 75% uh, uh, of them are, are studying all these soft things, social sciences. And only one quarter is, is studying real sciences. If we look at the uh, 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 secondary school level, European average is that, this is uh, the, the secondary school level, that 60% uh, that are studying in the professional school, okay? When they graduate, they are 19 year old and they already have the price tag attached. They already know something. They are able to do something. And 40% are studying in general school. In Switzerland, from the ninth class, only 17% of the students will go to the general se secondary school. Everybody else is going to professional school. In Estonia, this is 70 and 30. 70 is the general, 30 is, is, uh, is, is professional school. So the mistake is somewhere already very far there. And this is not the, the mistake of these young people, but this is the mistake of their, their, their fathers and mothers, I guess, who have injected wrong values. So I'm not very optimistic. I'm really, but, but I am even more pessimistic because today, if I look around in the, uh, in Est I don't see anybody, any visioner. I don't see any political force, any political party, any person who has the global picture and who, who has a recipe and who is willing and able to talk, to, 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 to give this message to the, to the Estonian people. I don't see anybody today in Estonia.
Thank you very much. And Mr. Arak, uh, I have just a very brief question that takes a very brief answer. The yes question, no? fin yeah. fin Finland is our immediate neighbor. Is this our bad luck or our good luck? Uh, okay, Finland will have very big problems, and they are publicly already saying that they have to cut their welfare, and, and uh, I'm very sorry about them. But I guess uh, that this is, but why Estonia has lost much less population, if, to, if we take as a percentage, compared with Latvia and Lithuania? This is just because they are so close. And it's only just, just one, uh, one hour and a half. Okay, there are, their kids are growing somewhere in, in South Estonia, and they see their father maybe once per week or once per month, and this is a real problem. But it gives us such an uh, opportunity mm -hmm. to, because with the same labor driving the bus, you, you really earn three times more. Mm -hmm. So I guess this is yes and no, yeah. because, because if, they have, if they are cutting their welfare, they are buying less from us, yeah. but still they are very, very quick and, and cheap opportunity to, to, to earn more. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Arak, for your very good answers and, of course, for your very good and inspiring presentation.